Well, thanks so much for joining us as we continue looking through uh, the, these uh, passages in First and Second Peter regarding living hope. And by the way, happy Fourth of July! What a great day to celebrate uh, the birth of our country, and what a privilege it is to live uh, in the United States of America. Second Peter one seventeen through eighteen. That's our passage today. I'm going to read the passage and then make some comments on it. 2 Peter 1, 17 through 18, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, we ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on that holy mountain. Let me uh, tell the story that Peter is referring to in this passage. So really, it wasn't one of Peter's finest moments, but for sure, it was one of his most memorable ones. Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to a high mountain, and there his figure changed before their very eyes. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking to Jesus. It's better for a person just to stay quiet and soak in such a glorious moment as it seems James and John did, but the impulsive Peter opened his mouth and said, Lord, it'd be good uh, if we're all here together, and uh, why, why don't we just build three tents so that uh, there's one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah? Can't you just hear James whisper to John, I cannot believe he just said that. Well, Jesus didn't respond, and while Peter was still speaking, God interrupted. The Father sent a bright cloud that enveloped them and God the Father spoke from the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The voice of God caused the three disciples to fall on the ground. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise up, have no fear. When they looked up, Moses and Elijah was gone. Only Jesus was there. I love that passage. Only Jesus was there. And only Jesus, he's the only one with us all the way through life's journey. Peter was indeed an eyewitness of Christ's majesty. While the false teachers of his day invented these, these clever stories, he spoke the very words of God. His first hand account carried weight with the recipients of the letter because he was there and he witnessed the majesty of God. And his letter is just as authoritative for us today as it was the first day it was written. Father, thank you for the integrity of your word. Thank you, the Lord, for, for those who walked with your son, Jesus, and witnessed his glory and majesty and have shared that with us so we can have that, that same experience as we walk with him today. Thank you so much for Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen.